<laughs> so, um, in this role, one of the things that is, is really critical is that um, while it's not like a 24/7 job necessarily on a on a day to day basis, that there's that there are emergencies, snowstorms. How problematic is it for you to flex your schedule based off of uh, being available for, for things like that? I don't see it being a problem. I do it now with the job that I have now. I go in for all overtime. I try to take all overtime because I like the money. But um, it's something that comes along with the job. It's really no other way to say it. If you need it, you need it. Okay. Um, quick follow-up to that, though. Um, so one of the challenges in a small town as a highway superintendent is to um, is that you become basically responsible for your own budget. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what kind of experience do you have in like in um, schedule management of of people that you are working for or with you in order to minimize uh, overtime when it's appropriate? Mm -hmm. I don't have much experience with that. Okay. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I do because that's not fair to you I guys. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, I'm sure it wouldn't be that hard to figure out and learn how to appropriate you know, the right calls to make so you're not putting too much where it's not supposed to be. Fair enough. Have you had any of the OSHA training that they've been coming around and doing about? No. Oh. I don't think I've done with OSHA is the OSHA 10. That's just the online course. OSHA really hasn't came by our garage. We haven't had any OSHA Yeah, they classes. showed up. Okay, so they showed up about a month ago now here. And it, the, the deal was that if we did a, an audit with them, yeah. uh, that they wouldn't come back and find us if they later <laughs> found something. Yeah. So if we, you do voluntary audits, then we did a voluntary <laughs> audit because it was a great thing to do. Yeah. And and uh, so that we we've, we've done that. You probably ought to ask about it. That's <laughs> because there was by either September first or August first or something. There was a date, a cutoff date, and then after that, if they showed up, then you could be fined. Yeah. So we weren't looking for fines. So it's mm -hmm. let's do the audit and. The good news is there were a couple of things that were found, but not significant, and, and they were taken care of and done deal. So it was, That's it was a good experience. Yeah. But but at the same time, we want to stay in front of any of these OSHA requirements because if you don't, it will be fine. Right. Yeah. Because previously yeah. OSHA didn't apply to municipalities and state entities, and that changed. It must that be pretty it, recent. It, yes. it was just this year that it okay. that it's become active. So okay. or late last year. Might have been January first of this year, um, so it's it's one of those things that we're we're asking people to be, you know, proactive. conscious about and proactive. So, yeah. so qualifications for the position. What 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 really it really attracts you to this position based on your experience? I like to take charge. I'm I'm pretty eager. Okay. This is what I'm, I'm very, very prideful in what I do. So I, I kind of even like do it with my boss now. I get in there. I just I want to lead. I want to teach people. I want people to, I guess, put their best foot forward there at work. I have a very, very strong pride about my work. I take it very seriously. So I try to lead with that with the people that I'm surrounding myself with and I want them to do their best and put their best effort in as well because if they don't then it's really no point in working or being here. Just a waste of time. Um, so what do you feel, you, you talked a little bit about teamwork and training but then also about like pushing people to be their best. What what kind of assets or skills do you feel that you bring to the job that make you qualified to do that? And and how do you how do you handle that first period of time as as you enter a team as a team leader as a supervisor and and effectively 
you get them bought into that same passion. You can't jump into that. You have to work into that flow, feel each person out, see where everybody is strong, what they're not strong at. And you, you really can't. You can't force it, so you have to take your time with it. I mean, not like a long time, but give it a couple of weeks so you see how everybody acts together and see which person's going to be strong at this and which person's going to be strong at something else. So then you can bond them together to work together. And each person has a, I think everybody has a different strong point in a work ethic. So if you get to figure that out, then it's easier to push people to do work together. Because I might be real strong at one point, but Joe might be stronger at a different but if we can figure that out, then it's much easier to work together and get people working in a team effort. Okay. I have a quick question that's not actually really um, covered in your, in your resume. Um, internal in Brookfield, we do a lot of our own equipment maintenance. Yep. So how would you rate yourself from a standpoint of, of those particular skills? Those mechanical skills? Yeah. And, and is that something you're open to from the standpoint of operating the, the, the highway department that way where a lot of the work stays in the house? That's fine. That's how holding this. We work with the mechanics. Do you guys have a mechanic or is it just everybody no, does a little bit? I mean, have like Donald, Donald's strength is a mechanic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's, really, he's really good at mechanical and, and her boys, too. And her boys, yeah. Okay. Because when our old, um, that was the question I was going to ask. Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Oh, no, that's I didn't fine. mean to jump your question because it's not on the paper, so I, I didn't. Part of that too. Because what our old highway supervisor has done, he's kept, you know, a lot of the older trucks that we have, yeah. and he's kind of, he has kept them and he's used them for parts so that he can keep the other ones running and he doesn't have to go out and be buying new, you know, trucks all the time. Right. Now, do you have the ability to, to repair these trucks? And, not by myself, yeah. but if I'm working with somebody, yeah, else, working with I work with the mechanics at my job. Yeah. All with the lawn. That's if we're not plowing, we're helping the mechanics yeah. keep up on everything. Yeah, because that, he's saved us a lot of truck. money over the years by yeah. not having to buy a lot well, of new trucks. The catch, catch basin, catch basin yeah. truck at seventy four thousand dollars. I don't think you could ever find. Yeah. No. That's what he did it for. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. it was. Mm -hmm. Trucks are not. No, no, no they're not. Fortunately, the time I work, well, they buy a lot of them, but I don't know how. But <laughs> we don't. We're about a smaller co yeah. we're, we're about a community of 3,500 down here. Yeah. I did a little research before I came. Okay, Clarence, you want to jump in? Oh, oh, yeah, well, um, you did teamwork. So, yes. Oh, so, yeah, so if we called your boss, what would be the that one project that you've done of late that you'd be most proud of? The, uh, probably the one that we finished last year right before winter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we uh, ripped out all the berm in the neighborhood. We had it reclaimed, not, sorry, not reclaimed, milled. We put in, it didn't have granite curbing on the radiuses, so we did all granite curbing, all the ADA stuff, and then we got it all back, so we put the berm in and paved the night before we got that snowstorm in November. Good. <laughs> that would be the job I'm most proud of. Right. It took us yeah. from probably end of July to November to do it. Oh, wow. It okay. was a big, big area. project. Yes. And we only had six, six guys, seven guys. So it's a, that's a lot of work. Yeah. A lot of granite. A lot of granite. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how do you respond when you've got a whole bunch of tasks in front of you and a certain amount of pressure to get pretty much everything that's on your plate done? What what techniques or tactics or how do you handle kind of multiple tasks? Delegate. See which ones are going to be the quickest. Just dive in. Get it done. There's really no Good explanation on that. I don't think. Like I said, we stay very, very busy, and with six, seven guys, 
we all divide and conquer, we all know our strong points, and that's where we go. So that's what I was saying after the teamwork and trying to get everybody figured out. You gotta figure out what everybody's strong points are, and then you divvy it up from there. But try to do it together if you can, but you can't always work together. You gotta divide and conquer. Good point. Yeah. You can't have some six guys on one job when you've got no. <laughs> 12 different Plus things you work that you've done. <laughs> no. That doesn't work. You definitely got to split things up. Yeah. Uh, do you have any questions that you would like to ask about? Yeah, because I try to find out <laughs> about the water system in town. I know you have a stand tank. And, yeah, we uh, have, it's, we have this, this wells. We have the, their wells. Yep. And they're down by, um, I don't know if, how familiar you are with Brookfield at all. A little bit, not. They're down on Quaybox Street. Okay. They're off, off the road on Quaybox Street. We have wells and that's where the um, water, that's where the water system is run by. Okay. Yeah. It, and then it comes up into the holding tank. And the holding tank isn't all that old. They've done that probably for maybe, oh, I don't know, five, six years now. It's a pretty new holding tank. Do you know roughly how many uh, services are in town? Anything like that? No. It's We're on board for that. Yeah, we have a water board and they yeah, also have yeah. a water superintendent. Okay. Yeah. 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 Although there's a lot of like crosstalk and, and that that's actually a question that we didn't ask previously, but um, I know you say you're kind of the, the number two fellow where you're at, and, and it looks like you're mostly in like operator positions along the way. But yeah. how do you handle like working with somebody who's like not in your same food chain to get jobs done? Like so from a standpoint of like a different supervisor or like a, a peer that doesn't necessarily work work, yeah. work either work for you or work for your supervisor. Have you ever had to work across departments? In, in any of your roles? Just at the town, okay. working with the water department okay. on water breaks, you know, yeah. stuff like that. They've kind of done the same thing here. They, all work, together. they all work together and there's a problem. Everybody okay. knows each other, so yeah. pretty much they get along very well. Yeah. Everybody, so. It's really not that yeah. difficult, you know. And as long as, how are the guys that are here now? Are they good guys? Good guys. Yeah. Yeah. They've been here a long time. Yes. 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 Our, That's one of our challenges. And we did. We just hired a new water superintendent because our other one he retired. At, Bruce was here with us probably. Oh, I'd say 20 years. He was the highest. He was the supervisor of the water, and then he was a water commissioner before that. Yeah. So he was with us for many years, and so we just hired a new one. That is the are the guys young, old, in um, between, the both. New water person's pretty young. Ish. He, yeah, he's a youngish, maybe mid thirties. Yeah, and then uh, most of the folks at in the highway department though are older. Most of them are are. Um, About thirty plus years experience. Yeah, yeah years Donald experience has thirty two years, and I don't know so how long. Something's close. Close he's, to that. He's close to that, and Mike, I don't know how long he's been involved. Yeah. Or, he just he's been, he's worked for us for a few years. Right. But again, he's an older. He's an older guy too. Yeah. One of the challenges of a small town is mm -hmm. is. Attrition. Yeah. Folks going to bigger towns and those kinds of things. It's a, it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it is. Skill, yeah, hang on to skill people is a good stuff. Okay. Yeah. I think all, not necessarily just the small towns, I think all towns are finding that to be. Well, especially with the economy going the way the yeah. economy is going. Yes. And I know a lot of different people in a lot of different areas, even with like the towns too, but. It seems like everybody is having that problem keeping or just finding the right people because yeah. there's so many other jobs like said the economy's doing so well. Mm -hmm. It's it's really hard to, to find somebody to stay focused in the town jobs. Mm -hmm. It is. When they overlook the other things like the benefits and the you know it's, it's, it's true. Yeah. yeah. They don't they miss that part of the picture. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. So we have some more questions. Well, I, I, I really appreciate you coming yeah. in and, and sharing with us. You guys have me. I yeah. really, really appreciate it.
Thank you. Thank you. Would you guys like a, I don't think I have references in there. Would you like a copy of references? Yeah, sure. You want to make sure? Sure. Great. 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 What's that? Well, I was going to say you didn't even hold it against me. They almost killed him at the door. I'm not making it back. <laughs> That's minor. Have a great night. Okay, Thank you. Too. Take care. <coughs> right, uh, can, we have, can we break for a minute? Yeah. We're going to break for a minute. So, so you want the. You got a recess? Yes, yeah, I'll minutes. make a motion to recess yeah. for like five minutes. Within five minutes, yeah, because we have a. It's going to be great. Okay, I'd like to, uh, the residents of the town who are going to be watching this this evening that um, we had started, Sharon had another taping that she had to do and it wasn't because she missed this one, so we had, she started when we, we were interviewing our second candidate. Our next one here is Jeff Nestor. Okay, uh, this, the highway supervisor position here in the town of Brookfield is a working supervisor. I don't know if you understand that. I do. Position. Okay. Okay, one of the first things we ask, um, if you're a successful candidate, can you pass both a CORI test and a physical exam? The CORI, yes, a physical, I hope so. <laughs> okay. okay, we'll go on to Mr. Carter. Um, oh, yeah, sure. Um, back to supervisor experience, I mean, I the job typically here is a working superintendent. Mm -hmm. and I want to be clear that that's what we do, but back, back to if, that, if that's the role and that's how it's approached, your experience is in that kind of environment. So I'm currently a project manager, but I was working in front of that. Today I was in the field all day laying out jobs and meeting where I met with the town of Concord this morning, the town of the city of Manchester, the city of Concord, the city of Manchester this afternoon. I don't. I'm in the office 30% of the time this year, so it's, I don't work on trucks anymore, but I have in the past. I fully understand when you say a working position, I fully understand the scope of what that means. Good. Yeah, and by the way, we all have the same questions. And Excellent. All right. <laughs> and we are repeating for the third time. Your turn. Okay, so um, can you talk to me a little bit about your super supervisory experience like like uh, in a leadership role in an organization whether it was uh, an, uh, by the title or whether it was just by the activities that you're doing sure so I can go back to the 80s if you'd like my family owned a construction company and being one of the uh, owners nephews I guess I was kind of cast into a supervisory position where I really wanted to be or desiring to be, but I guess I needed to be at the time. Uh, so I got a craft course in the supervisor uh, of craft employees, real, real quick, especially if you recall what the age were like in construction. It was not quite as friendly and safe as it is now. Later on, took over the company, uh, started my own business, had to supervise, manage all phases from the accounts payable to receivable to maintenance to purchasing to human resource. Uh, in my current role, I'm a project manager. I manage 30 gas employees. Uh, we're not a union company, but it functions very similarly. There's very specific roles and classifications for our employees. How can I expand on that? I don't know. It's, it's, it's pretty intense sometimes. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, what do you consider your style of supervising? So I'm a diplomat. But I also understand that in the role of leader, I'd like to call it more than a manager on both, but I, I try to be more of a leader than a manager. I think a leader is hard to find at this point. And from what I've been seeing within our, I work for the Middlesex Corporation. We have a large number of employees and there's a lot of people that manage, but really don't, you know, own the job and own the project. And I have a number of project managers that are excellent at paper. 
and that's kind of where it ends and it leaves some of the other guys kind of in the loop, let's say. And I don't really, uh, it's not my personality to be like that. I like to lead, I like to teach, and I like to hear the facts and hear the story. I try to be a good listener by the, my communication skills. I think it's personally in a construction environment, it's one of the most important things to be a listener before just a, uh, a talker, I guess, from lack of a better term. Thank you. We have some covert projects coming up here in town. Do you have, um, what do you have for experience with drainage and culvert training? A lot. Um, I don't even know where to begin, honestly. Um, I see the culverts in town. I live just up the street and I drive mm -hmm. across many of them in North Brookfield. And if I was to give them a rating, I don't think, they don't, we can just say F, because I can't go any less than that. Mm -hmm. And this is my experience is I put deep culverts in uh, box culverts, very large sectional pieces, not just the typical piece of ADS pipe that we're going to put here in the town. Mm -hmm. um, we get some big ones. Some, some more large. Yes. So, so I've got a lot of experience in, in all phases of that. It's, it's the, the installation process, not really the materials. We're going to have an engineer and engineer our plans for us. The installation can be very tricky. I don't know if we do that in house here in Brookfield. We were planning on doing a very large color project in house. Good for you, I love the aggressiveness. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you, as you might look at it eventually, it may or may not be the right decision. But at the same time, back to certifications and what, whatnot, as far as the boxes and whatnot, have you had that background? So I'm not a professional engineer. Okay. I do have a degree in civil engineering among a degree in project management. Now. Yep. Um, very familiar with the process, the procedures, the purchasing, the estimating, the leading of the crew. I think you know if if we had a good crew that was willing to work and listen again, something you could maybe pull off. Again, I don't know skill sets or anything, but right. It, something that would have to be managed and understood. We would cross our fingers. Tree wood, tree wood. Oh, yeah, tree wood. Are you uh, also along with this position comes the position of tree ward? Very nice. <laughs> Do you know anything on that idea? Because we have about, you said, 200 trees. Over 200. Over 200 and just to reassure you, in a, in, a, in a town our size, you don't actually have to be a certified yeah. arborist in order to be a tree ward. That, that, perfect. I'm not a certified arborist. I've cut many trees. I've burned 12 quote a year at my house. Um, I understand. I've talked to the, the, I think the town of just north of us had a consultant work as a tree warden when they were doing the site distance clearing. Um, but no, I'm not, not afraid of that kind of. That's actually interesting. And we usually take down about 90 trees a year. Really? Yeah. yeah. We have a crew that comes in and, you know, takes it down. Yeah. And, and the highway, they, they usually Works assist them. Yeah. They assist them. Mm -hmm. It was. So. Um, Oh, it's up to you if you want to go. That's fine. Um, so emergencies, snowstorms. It sounds like you're coming in from the road. Um, so I, I suspect you're used to having to flex your schedule based on the business needs. But uh, uh, how comfortable are you with the fact that there's that this work sometimes is not necessarily schedulable seven to three or nine to five? Or so let, let me ask one question to set this up. So how many trucks? Pieces of equipment do we have for snow and ice in town? Five, six. Five. So when I was it depends on if you do a lot of work with the one time. Right. So, so yeah, we've, that, we've yeah. got like basically four to five of the bigger trucks, and mm -hmm. then usually you're running a couple of the one tons with yeah, salt sure. and, yeah, and, that, and, and yeah, minor plow. Three of the one tons, I think. So I think it says somewhere in the resume. When I worked for the Middlesex Group the first time, I was the superintendent in charge of highway maintenance in Area 4D in the state. There's more lane miles in that state than any other county in the state. Snow and ice was yep. one of them. Okay. Um, when I was in business for myself, I had 12 large pieces of equipment. Yep. And so very well aware of okay. the, the one o'clock in the morning uh, phone calls. Okay. Right. Can I ask the elephant in the room? It sounds like you have like some really big experience. 
Yeah. That's a little tough. I know, we're a little bit. I, I gotta ask you that question, even though it's not on my list. Is, that's, is that's, what makes you willing to sit here with three selectmen from a tiny town next to your house, given some of the that, some of what you've done? That is a perfect. If that is the question, what right? Why? So I like my life. My wife and I get along great. I live right up the street. I have a nice house. My dogs. I could walk here. <laughs> As I said earlier, I met with the city of Concord this morning. Driving, my car's got 170,000 miles on it, it's not that old. I can pay for the car, of course, I can reimburse, but it's just, I literally haven't gone home yet. Luckily, I had this in the trunk. I put this on, came here to meet with us, I'm going to drive home, and I try to go to the gym so I can pass these physical fitness tests mm -hmm. that we have for me. I'm going to go to the gym tonight at 9 o'clock, and then get back up at 4. Not that we wouldn't put in a lot of hours here. We snow and ice could be, I've done 72 hours without sleeping. And I don't drink coffee. Oh, God bless you. But, but, <laughs> but the rest of the time, I mean, I could, like, you know, just thinking of coming here or coming, I know the town garage is down the street. I mean, for me to be a massive quality of life issue. It's fair. The job itself, I'm not really too intimidated by, <laughs> honestly. Um, I, I had uh, to... To be frank and honest, I had applied to the same position in the town of Ware and was selected and presented to this board of selectmen, similar to this, a couple more people on that board. Um, turned the job down because of the pay. I'm willing to take a pay cut for my life. And I make good money, but I have, you know, we all know you have to head towards Boston to get paid. Yeah. I head further than Boston sometimes, apparently, but. Uh, but that you know that's worth something to me the time how much i don't know that would be the that's be the, the that'll be the test and i understand we were talking 35 ish 100 people that was the i don't want to say excuse we'll use the word reason that was the reason and where they were also looking for somebody with a water operator's license no we have our own water department so did that so did they mm -hmm. which was my question i'm like so i'm very friendly with the director of the public works in the city of worcester Palm Lucy. He doesn't have a water operator's license. We have a department for that. That was their, that was their uh, crunch, I guess. But again, I was willing to take quite a substantial pay cut. I met with Stuart Beckley out there a number of times, and I told him, here's what I made. I'll go here. I didn't want to go that far. I understand we're a smaller town. I'm willing to make concessions. Now, here also in Brookfield, our highway, I don't know what experience you have with like, Maintaining the trucks and fixing them. I'll, I'll stop you right there and save us all the time. A lot. <laughs> because what our previous, the one that just retired here, he used to keep the older trucks and then he'd take the parts off of them so, you know, we could put them on the, the trucks and so, we, you know, so we could maintain them mm -hmm. and we, we wouldn't have to be out buying, you know, new trucks all the time. New trucks are expensive apparently. So do you have the experience of like rebuilding the trucks? Are so you working with one of the other guys down there? I have at my home up the road here the remnants of a trucking and construction company, which my wife is very happy with. I, we can't get in our garage because I have a complete repair shop in there and I still tinker around, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's it's that's kind of like the fun part of it. I mean, I don't do it anymore, but it's I wander around in our garage sometimes. Like, what are doing this for? I see the trucks we have. I, 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 all of the Brookfields, you know, I pay attention. It's what I've done my whole life, so I see what's going on. I think I would have some good uh, insight into maybe a different way to do things. I understand trucks are expensive. I know my hearing works pretty well. You just had talked to the previous gentleman about a catch basin kind of truck. Yep. All right, go for it. Wonderful, they're expensive to purchase a new one. I would, I think there's a better way to do it. Fair. Less expensive and less liability. That's all I think of things. I have to think of things that way. Have you had any of the OSHA training? I have. You have. Okay. I really don't have a need for 30 or 40. I don't work in hazmat situations. I mean, I could. Mm. It just 
preference. Because they had just come around here one month ago. Right. They're up for OSHA 10 training. No, they're basically getting ready for the audit. Yeah, we or for audits. We did a voluntary uh, did a voluntary audit so that if, if we had any deficiencies where the OSHA just became applicable to municipalities, they did. It, yeah. it gave us an opportunity to do a, a gap analysis. So oh, that was my I was just going to say. I wasn't sure if municipalities were, and I am very familiar with the city of Worcester. They, you know, they never were out yet. Now they right changed over. I think in January. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're getting better. Simple enough. Click safety. Yep. Use $139 or something. Do you have some more questions? Or we? I think we got the team thing down, and I think that back to your current employer, back to the most proud, your current employer, if we were to pick up the phone and ask, mm -hmm. is there something that they'd say gangbusters? Excellent, excellent question. I recently met with uh, my. My boss, I work directly for the senior vice president, and the word he used to describe it was versatility. Apparently, I'm good at a lot of things. I don't know if I'm excellent at a lot of things, I won't go that far, but he called me a Swiss Army knife. I don't want to lose you. You did a lot of stuff. I do this, I do that, I do this, I do a number of different jobs. I, I work for our energy division, which is I manage our gas operations, um, but I also estimate projects. Went through. I'm, I'm our lead estimator in the energy division. I'm the project manager for the gas operations. I do a lot of our admin work because we don't have one. Not my favorite pastime, but we can do it. Um, you name it, I do it. Fix trucks, apparently. Drive them right, occasionally. <laughs> Good. Questions for us? Um, just the expectation. I mean, what are you really looking for? Or not. Typically, a municipality is looking for a professional engineer to come in and lead the team. And I don't know how realistic that really is, but that's a great idea, no. I think. So, yeah. So, so I think I think historically speaking, we've we've gotten by without somebody who necessarily had an engineering degree. Mm -hmm. And frankly, it was your licensures and your location that they get you in front of us and not the, the necessarily the educational credentials. Um, and uh, what we're really looking for is somebody who will come in, um, appreciate the team we have and the skills that they have, and figure out where you know their skills can complement that and move the town forward. This, this board has been very focused on kind of forward movement of, of um, getting the town to recognize the potential that we have. I mean, something that we're proud of is that usually, if, and I know I've commuted for years out of this community, you know when you cross the Brookfield line from a standpoint of snow and ice, okay? Um, our roads aren't great, but they're not as bad as some in the area, because I, I, I used to have a position where I put on similar miles on my vehicle to what you put on, okay? Um, we want to be that town that, but we've also done that for, on average, about, I think it's 15% less than what our peer towns spend for the same amount of road miles. So if you take a look at like a per road mile and percentage of our budget and stuff like that, we, we've done that level of service on basically a shoestring. And we need to figure out how to continue to address the issues we have, like our culverts, we've got some pretty large road reconstruction projects that really need to happen. We need to do all the paperwork to try to bring money into the town in order to make those things happen. We have an amazing asset with our current highway um, administrative assistant, because I think she's brought what, seven like, a year. What's that? She averages a million seven a year yeah. in grants. In grant money coming yeah. into the town in order to get some of these projects done. That's awesome. Okay. Um, so, so we've got some um, we've got some amazing raw material in the town, and we when we need somebody that will be the glue to stick it all together, right? That's what we're looking for from the person going into this. Um, so, is that fair? I'm just speaking for myself, yeah. but so, like you said, with the roads, we've had compliments, so that we're the best roads in the area. They've always been very good, and plus. You know, like I said in the beginning, it, it's a working supervisor. It's mm -hmm. not somebody, you know, that just, he's in the office, you know, doing his, <laughs> you know, doing, 
figuring out, you know, what he's going to do next for the job because he's actually out there with the crew working along. Yeah. And like, you know, with the tree board part, they work with, uh, they're out there also and they work with, they hire a tree firm and they're, they're out there actually doing the work with them also. Mm -hmm. And do you have, we can ask too, with chapter 90, Mike? Familiar with, um, more familiar with grant writing and proposal work but in my estimating role, like, so I kind of do, uh, which was you touched that point, that's great because like to have somebody to help do that, that can get, I don't know exactly how the night grant writing works, but I know some other larger federal projects that I worked on can be a pile of paper. Yeah, we're doing um, municipal vulnerability um, this Thursday, where we'll get be able to get agreed that, that we can move forward with that certification to get some more points for the next set of ground, uh, grant writing. Right. Open space goes on May 1st. We'll get that done by the 30th. So, several things that we're doing in the works to be able to get more points to get more grants mm -hmm. because otherwise, this town could not afford it. That's terrific. Anything else for us? I can ask a lot of questions, but up to you. Just prying questions. Like, why is the position available? Because they're retiring. Retiring? Perfect. Yeah. And, he, and he needed the time to get his, uh, he couldn't get enough time in for Worcester County retirement. Mm -hmm. and so he needed to go on the commercial side to get to finish that up, to be able to get a retirement. Anything else you want to ask me? I mean, there's, there's a number of pages here we can pick at. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have all the licenses that are required? Um, I think so. Okay, he still has a C it looks like you still have an active CDL, right? I do. So have you had a recent DOT card? You have the DOT medical cert certificate. I so um, That's actually if you like licenses you can go over them. I know you're probably not familiar with that NATTCP license. So that's a that stands for Northeast Transportation Training uh, Certification Program. And it specifically points out that I'm a licensed assurance technician for highway maintenance. There you go. <laughs> but quite that means I don't know. But and you do actually have a mass construction supervisor. Um, I do. So you could actually pull permits times when you needed to like do a demolition or something like that. I could, yes. Yep. Demolition yes. that. Because we do on occasion do some, some of that with the highway department. The but the, the, the the license specifications themselves are kind of tricky. They call it 35,000 cubic feet on a license. When you measure that into a house, what I can actually pull for a permit is quite small. <laughs> Fair but, enough. But I do have one, yes. Yeah, because we get through more buildings to come down. Yeah. You know, if we do, uh, if you were to have a subcontract stuff out, the net step stuff, the concrete field inspector license, I mean, I can kind of hold there. For the fire, yeah. you know what I mean? Hold them accountable for, yeah. for how they do stuff. Um, what else? The hoisting engineer license, the 1B means I've operated slash owned cranes before. Okay. Not that we have that here in town, but... Uh, this well, one, one of the thoughts that we had was Central Street, the street that's in front of us, to do a rebuild in a number of years since it has been rebuilt. A lot of trenching to, to go there, so... It was going to be a fairly large machine to be able to do what needs to get done up there. We had also this year with the Chapter 90 money, we had planned on doing, this is Central Street out here, we had planned on doing Central Street, but with, the, with um, our previous we were retiring, we kind of put that on hold. The whole street was going to be dug up. They were going to put in new water pipe, new water. They were going to do sidewalks, the whole work. Yeah, but we also were putting on hold to pursue some grant money as well. Yeah, pursue some grant money. But, no, but we did have the money in Chapter 90. Absolutely. Oh, yes. And again, is this typically self perform work? Or do you advertise it? We, we do predominantly yeah. self perform work. Yeah. Um, we do bring in contractors for pieces of it, depending. Mm -hmm. um, really, we're. we're we focus on best value, and a lot of times it's doing it in-house. Um, sure. Even our our uh, police department, we did most of the dirt work 
in house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, just like playground. Playground's yeah. eighty thousand dollars in total in and out. And the guys, if they do it for the groundwork for probably 2025, 20, we get that credit and we can get park money for the 70% balance. Yeah, so yeah. You, you can yeah. play the games that way, you can get a lot of, you lot of stuff. You get some good resources in town, obviously. That's yeah. Yeah. It's kind of uh, unheard of, really. Yeah. So. In fact, we, we hired a uh, grant writer for you get the highway barn down the hill, you get the Town hall up the hill. Well, we have a grant writer up the hill now that's focused on mm -hmm. clear government that she just it was given that award. Mm -hmm. So we know what we're spending in comparison to others. Kind of get a feel for how we should approach the future. Sure. Sounds like you get a great blind place. Mm -hmm. We work hard. Good time to Anyway. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having Appreciate your time. Mm -hmm. Pleasure to meet you. Go to the Thank gym. You. Nice to meet you. <laughs> do, do, do time for me. I go home first. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. I guess it's other now, right? Or do we want to discuss this? I think we need to discuss this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guys, got all the degrees and everything. The, the other guys or uh, younger guys yep. would want to have to work into the job. The ch challenge would be if you were to offer to him, it's, it's going to be pay. Pay. And I think another thing too, I, mean, I think he's, I think he's more used to being the boss yes. and not being out there working. That's my only problem with him. I got the impression he spends a lot of time on but, the job sites. No, he said he supervises 30 people right now. So yeah. I think he's used to being more of a supervisor capacity than being a working supervisor. That's the feeling I get with he's concerned. But then they have the flip side of that is the time to get either of the others up to speed because they don't have any of that experience. That's the challenge. I mean, I, what, what, I take a run at this guy. Yeah. I take a run at him. Yeah, and see if, 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 if what if our it, if it, pay scale it, fits. If it doesn't fit, we can be very simple about it. Yeah. And, and warn him that there's not any room, right? No, there's no. none. And, exactly. uh, and, and go from there. Yeah. You know, see, figure out what we want to pay him, and then I don't know, we have to find out the vacation because when we just change that around, yeah. And you should give him a little extra vacation than what he's used to have. That's possible. Mm -hmm. well, with this time in those companies, you're probably not going to get well, much. Well, he doesn't have that long with that company that he's with. That's my only, that's the only thing that I have qualms about. What he's oh, doing. I agree. Totally agree. Yeah. That's my only thing. Well, and, and I don't see... I don't want to in any way discount your concern, Linda, because I think that there's, a, there's some risk there. Um, I think he's pretty clear on what the expectation is, though. But he's not a, he, he's, he's, he's uh, what was I, say? I, I don't think we were unclear in the communication. I think he's surprised at how much we do in-house. I think that's a little bit intimidating to him because yeah. he understands how complicated some of that stuff is. Flip side is he understands how complicated some of that stuff is. <laughs> where, where does he live? North, North Brookfield. Brookfield. He lives right up here on the Brookfield Road. Yeah, he literally can. His, his comment early in the interview was he could walk to work. That's nice. Yeah. And oh. what do you think on the other two? Ryan beats out Phil as far as Mike. Yes. Yeah. And, and yeah. it's just his, his inexperience. He's a hard worker. Oh, yeah. Very hard. So, so uh, he's got that reputation. He, he, Went and visited and talked and kind of get, got himself an understanding mm -hmm. of the field. Yeah. So I, it would be Ryan. Yeah, I get, I get the impression that Phil could, um, might come in swinging so hard that he winds up losing any support yeah. from, the, right. yeah. from the team. So basically we'd be between the two of them. Yeah. yeah. And only we're, I, again, I would say,
say, we, we've got the column study, we know what we're paying. I would charge my friend here with a uh, challenge, paying, paying vacation to see what, what would fit or what could fit. Yeah, and I think one of the things we need to consider, and, and part of it we can just get from the treasurer's office, is, is I would pull like a five year historic on what we paid Herb, including um, what got paid out of snow and ice for overtime. Because it, it is a yeah, it is an hourly position, and it, so. and and the the flip side would be is if we want to take a look at that that five year for snow and ice, and, and I don't think we specified whether it was an hourly or salary position. So mm -hmm. if we want to take the risk out for ourselves, we can um, we could take a look at what that five year all in expense was, including the the uh, overtime. For snow and have them understand it's a salary position without overtime to stabilize the cost. Yeah. Um, it's worth the discussion. That's yeah. why I say if you were to agree with me, to just have a conversation to see if we're even close. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, because we can we can we can paint that picture even if it does stay in our own position and just and just say look, but there's typically an opportunity for about this much overtime. Um, and, Depending on what the work conditions are and snow and such, so because that's got to figure into it. You have a frowny face over there, Mr. Cleo. Oh, it's you a How soon could he stop? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't seem to. Oh, we didn't ask any. No, we didn't ask any. Of it's going to be a couple of weeks anyway. Yeah. Um, It'd be anywhere not, two to four, depending. Yeah. Well, you've been in construction business all these years. How was? We asked your opinion where he's been. Sound like the guy. Yeah. But you gotta see if you're close. Yeah. Well, yeah, if it was that close. That's even closer than what Harold was. Yeah. It's a fun. Oh no, no, I'm saying <coughs> back to the, the challenge is salary and, and vacation time. That's the real challenge. Yeah, so I could I could reach out to the treasurer's office and find out. I know I mean I know that the base salary is what's in the in the Warren article, but I need to understand how much you pull in from an overtime right. perspective. And having that conversation. And have that piece yeah. of the conversation with him is to, to let him know that. Yeah, we have to call him again. Yeah. Yeah, once we understood if it made any sense. Because yeah. there's no reason to bring him back in if the, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, because I, yeah, and, and he strikes me as the kind of person that with the understanding that this is a working position, I don't think he's going to be afraid to dig in. He doesn't strike me as being like physically lazy, and he's going to be, he'd have a hard time watching somebody else work. <laughs> you could tell in the first couple of weeks where he's going to go. Yeah. Plus that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably so. Yeah, I mean, but if he doesn't, if he didn't work out. If he doesn't, I would then go, go to, to Ryan and see what we could do, because then we've got a lot of work to get him up to, up to speed. A lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, he's young. Yeah, good. Yeah. Very decent young man, though. Oh, so. Yes. Oh, yeah. He's a worker. And that's the reputation he has. We had a recommendation on him from the, I think it was an Brookfield. Yeah. 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 And he highly recommends the to, to hire. Yeah. So, do we need a vote to have okay. that so, conversation? So, I'll, I'll make a motion that. Um, uh, to, that I'll do the research regarding um, historic compensation on the highway superintendent inclusive of overtime mm -hmm. and um, do you want me to just provide the numbers back and do you want to have the conversation with them Linda or do you want me to reach out with a, a, a preliminary offer? I would, I would do it with her because then you're the chair and you get the vote. Uh, that's why I, why I defer to you mm -hmm. because we either of us as chair or vice chair yeah. can always say no. Yeah, right. If you have a conversation. If I, I can have a conversation with them, I can, I can at least have the, the reach out and the somewhat the, the yeah. negotiating aspect of it and just bring it back to the board. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Right, and the sooner we can do that, the better. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'll reach out to, I'll reach out to Lonnie. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll send her an email tonight, but call her in the morning. Have a conversation with them hopefully sometime tomorrow. Yep, I can do that. Are you making that a vote? Yeah, I'll make I'll make a motion to uh, uh, I'll do the research and then reach out with a, uh, a preliminary offer 
um, phrased, yeah. pra phrased very specifically that it would be pending approval of the board. Um, and, like vacation time. Yeah, and I'll, I'll talk about the full package. Um, of, uh, and that way we can pack it and, and actually I'm fairly familiar from our contract negotiations with the police what our um, actual like insurance package and stuff like that actually looks like so uh, if he has any questions about that I'll, I'll direct them back to the treasurer but I do at least have some high level information. And like all fixed but it's not a contract three year appointment. Right, it's a three year appointment so mm -hmm. I'll explain to him the, 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 the terms of that and then uh, uh, I'll see what kind of response I get if, you, if it's not even in the right neighborhood I guess my question would then be do we want to meet again to talk salary for uh, what the offer would look like with, on, the, on our secondary candidate because um, I think with this gentleman we need to pretty much hit whatever max we have mm -hmm. in the till from the standpoint of uh, what we were paying her inclusive of his overtime I, I do honestly think if we if we were to go with Ryan that we probably look at backing off just a little bit based on his yeah. experience. Right. Right. That's so. I, but I know that's still my reservation about, I mean, with him being more of a supervisor, I still had that reservation. Yeah. Yeah. But that's why we have the conversation first. Yeah. Right. I, I really have a, it, it bothers me. I think this is what he thinks he's going to do is go and just be a supervisor and the guys are going to be, I don't, he didn't ask how many guys work down there. I mean, we only have like two guys that work down there, and I mean, now we have a seasonal. Hey, one, I can I can make that very I can make that very clear to I, him. Yes, I would like want. to make that very clear to him that he has, he, he's got to be out there working just like they are, plowing snow. You know, he's got to be hands on. Just can't be sitting in the office and telling people no, that what to work. do because that, that doesn't work. work. And then I know Herb had talked, when we had gone in, remember Karen, when we spoke to the advisory board, Herb had talked about hiring a third person on. I don't know if you discussed that with either one of you. He was to put something in the budget. Yeah, and he, would, had, yeah, he had talked to the advisory the board about it, and I guess he made it pretty plain and clear. And, that they yeah, when, when he had the conversation with me because of, because of the way he framed up what some of the work was I actually asked him to at least provide a comparison yeah. to uh, the board what it would take to contract out the work that he was associating with that full-time note mm -hmm. um, and he I think they were pretty much in favor yes they were they were pretty much in favor on board with it because they said he presented it quite well okay so I'll second that motion. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any more discussion on it? All Let's in favor? Aye. Um, okay. Now we'll move on to. Do you want to do correspondence next? For some reason, the executive session I put this. Well, I want to do there. other two. Too. Oh, other, yeah, do other first, yeah, and then correspondence. Okay. I, we had uh, we had a two hour meeting today with, uh, I had gotten in touch with. Um, a lot of associations like I told you yep. and uh, I had a lady get back to me her name is Marilyn Matthews she used to be the financial advisor or team leader down in Bellingham and she, mm -hmm. and she lives in, we in Webster oh, okay. and so um, she's been retired for seven years and she said that she would be willing to come in here to do the warrants okay. she said she wished she had more time because she noticed by looking at different things that there's a lot of work that needs to be done here in the town. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we know that. Yep. And uh, she said that she would come in for $35 an hour, which is good, so that's not bad at all. And she would work, um, so I guess Lonnie was working with her to get her, uh, if we approve um, to hire her tonight on a temporary, as a temporary accountant, she was going to get her her VADAR so that she could like work at home on some of these things. She would probably work, come in on Thursdays, I think she said, and she would take home the warrants, and then she would be back on Monday, and she would print everything out. Okay. And then we also talked, we brought Patty, and what's Patty's last name? King. We brought Patty King in, because Patty has been doing uh, about five hours a week, and she's been like scanning a lot of things in, but she said she would like to 
teach her to do a little bit of, you know, entering into the VADAR system. It's so like an accounting clerk. Yeah. Sort of. A little more. And I think we actually have a budget and a position for an accounting clerk. We do. Well, that's uh, that what was she said. Yeah, she was, was only working five hours, five hours a week for her. But she said she would like to train her to do that because she says you need to have a backup person to do some of that work which you didn't before. Absolutely. Yep. And then she said she would love, she does like a challenge, but she says that she doesn't have the time because she thinks that we've got to look around to get somebody in here who can come in and have all the departments prove with each other. Yeah. You know, and she says if somebody has to come in like for a whole week at a time, it's like a week and spend it with the tax collector yeah. and, the, and the accountant yeah. and you know, the water and the treasurer so that they all can prove because right now none of them are even proven. And we have to, that's a big challenge right there. So the idea of George coming in. Doing more of that work. George the, the account. George Hunt. Um, no, he no. doesn't know. Just doesn't have the time. And then I had, you had mentioned something here about Pioneer Valley. Well, Pioneer. Okay, so there are a group of towns out west that are working through Pioneer Valley okay. that ha have come into a cooperative. And again, I'd rely on you to chat with if if he came back. He was supposed to come back to see if they had extra time available. Now, who, who we have? Okay, so that was, uh, uh, is this, was Connor Robillard. Do you know I put it FaceTime? Will he be coming in? Uh, no, coming? no, I, I said hold off. Well, Connor went to uh, Pioneer Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy that was doing the work for Pioneer Valley was to come back to see whether or not he had room available. And it, it's a matter of a conversation between that person, the emails there for the contact person. And it was really whether or not you wanted to reach out to that person to say yay or nay. No, I, um, I'll talk to him what needs to be done. Yeah, and just see what they would be quoting. Now, to see how this looks here. Oh, yeah, the, this is a five towns have gathered together. Goshen, just it sounded like the towns north of UMass at Amherst are all small towns just like us and that they've been using this entity this, this uh, municipal uh, financial yeah. firm to to do a shared service okay. and so i'm one if he's doing five towns See if they can, add us. can they add one more yeah. and then the other email that we have from connor was whether or not cmrpc wants to do something and i think it's further down the road for us yeah but the, this guy, if, if they could do some hours for us on the mechanics, yeah. that would be a big deal. So. And when Marilyn was down here today, she had looked at her last ledger sheet. Yep. And it says a lot of negatives on it. She didn't like the looks of the water. Well, we need to rationalize. We had to do that for town meeting anyway. So that's a, so important that we get somebody oh. in here to be able to do that for okay. us. Oh, and then also, oh, okay, why don't we, I'd like to make a motion that we hire Marilyn Mat Matthews as our temporary accountant for uh, hourly rate of $35 an hour. You have that motion. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, then I heard back from Mary Jane Hand, who pretty much in charge of the DOR. She is releasing our Chapter 70 money only for March and April, and we have to get back to her by March, May 17th, and let her know the progress that we have done. Because I guess Marilyn had already talked to her, and she knows just what we're facing here in Brookfield. Because last year we faced a lot of the same thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then, oh yeah, then another another thing also, um, they went out for. Did they go up for the bid today? For the, um, they talked to Unibank about going out for the bond. They have to get know. another loan or a bond for the police station. Right. right. And they wanted, um, they wanted 2017. They wanted to see the balance sheet plus Schedule A, and we can give them that, but we can't give them anything for 2018. So she thinks that that might be a problem. Okay. Let's get going. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's so what we gotta do. We better, do. we better get somebody and get going and get all this done. Yep. Like she, she had told her, she said we won't have any free cash for town meeting. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, even we have to look to see if we'll be able to do the regular operating budget. 
Yeah. Yeah. So we get a lot, a lot of things eight to get, weeks. eight weeks to get done. So uh -huh. I will, I will call Connor tomorrow. Yeah, Connor, and then he gave you a contact for the, the group that does the five towns. Okay, and see if we can get somebody to come down. Yeah. Okay. Anything? Okay. All right. What else do we have here, Pam? Correspond? Yeah. That it's um. Does that anybody else have anything under other people? No, I just share with Beth. I, I've got three people signed up to help with the beach. Oh, great. So we're gonna That's do that. Good. Yeah, it is. So hopefully we can figure it out. Be ready right for town meeting to decide whether or not we go forward or not. Okay. Great. So we'll talk about it at the spot. Okay. Uh, this, okay. this is. Support for um, the Palmer Rail Stop. Yes. Yes. I yes. Do. I'll make a motion to support. Yes, I will make a motion too for for that. So yeah, I'll and second. the letter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the lottery. Yeah. 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 I typed oh, it up. Yeah. Well, they gave you a template. And I think isn't that from um, Charlie Blanchard? I think. Yes, yeah, Charlie's yeah. driving. Yeah. I, after I had retired, I worked for Charlie for a year because they had hired a new town clerk up there and I went up and trained her. And Charlie's a great guy. Yeah. 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 Uh, if we can get this thing. Oh, that would be great. The next stop wants to be here. <laughs> we had the old train station here years ago in Brookfield and it went quite, quite well from what I know from being one of the older, my older, older siblings in the family. Yeah. Where was the train station? It was right down where you went over before you go over the bridge. It, it sat right down in there onto the left. Mm -hmm. Onto the right, I mean, there was a train station down there, and there was um, an old grain mill. It was part of a, yeah, it was a train station here. And my father, I guess, from what I remember, my, he used to be a mail carrier at one time. He used to bring mail down there, too, that had to get up. And, uh, that, that's where it was, and it was quite busy. And then they also had in Brookfield. They all had their own, we all had our own train stations at one time. <coughs> but the closest thing now was what Springfield. Okay. What's from Springfield? Our, our New Haven, Connecticut. They, we do have Worcester too, but I mean New Haven, Connecticut too. So, yeah. so that would be great if we could get something up in power. Yep. Okay. So I guess that's about it. Our next thing is about going into executive session. Motion to move into executive session. Well, that is under. Second that motion. Three. Okay, and that's under number, number three, and it's right on, three. right on the uh, yeah. Okay. Right on the agenda. Okay. Yeah, it is on the yeah I wrote it on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The items listed which may be discussed are those reasonably anticipated by the chair. Oh, down is it down here? It, it receives says executive session exemption three. Yeah, exemption three. Yeah. To discuss strategy. Strategy, okay. I said saw that. Okay, to discuss strategy with respect to collective by bargaining litigation, if an open meeting may have any detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares. Uh, so I agree also with Bill and Lincoln. Senator. Coughlin, uh, Any discussion on that? Uh, aye. 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 And, and, we'll, then, and we'll reconvene. Yeah, we'll reconvene adjournment. to adjourn.